Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 105. Floor 105 has a reputation for being one of the hardest floors in all of Abyss, and is a major sticking point for many players. I can't tell you, since I've started this YouTube channel and this guide series, how many people have told me over the years that they are stuck on Abyss 105. It is a very difficult fight, and if you take a look at who we're facing, which is Bloodblade Corinne, it's pretty easy to see why. Her passive Curse Sword increases her damage, defense, and speed as her health decreases. She also cuts down on the amount of healing that you can give your allies. Additionally, if you use a non-attack skill, she will get the Reflect debuff, which is absolutely backbreaking to go against for your damage dealers because they'll essentially kill themselves alongside of BBK's astronomical damage as she gets low on life. She's also accompanied by two adds, this Luminescent Watcher and the Obscure Watcher. Both of these Watchers will increase the speed of Bloodblade Karin by Combat Radius pushing her throughout the fight. That doesn't seem so bad until you realize her ultimate Blade Arc Dragon. When she uses it the first time, it removes 20 souls. When she uses it the second time, it instantly kills your entire team. You have to kill Bloodblade Karin before the second Blade Arc Dragon or it's game over. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, I should just rush down the Bloodblade Karin. Here's the problem. Luminescent Watcher does not allow you to combat radius push your team. Luminescent Watcher does not allow you to take extra turns. Obscure Watcher doesn't allow you to reset cooldowns. And Obscure Watcher doesn't allow you to reduce the cooldowns of your moves. So essentially, these things are going to heal, cleanse, and CR push the BBK and they don't allow you to use most of the things that we've used thus far in Abyss to actually rush down the Bloodblade Karin. To make matters worse, the first floor is Scorpetra. Scorpetra does not take that much damage unless she is slept or stunned. The problem here is that Scorpetra, whenever she uses her ultimate, it will always target the first character, Remove all buffs from the character so you can't gimmick it by giving the character invincibility and do a massive amount of damage to that frontline character. The damage increases on Scorpetra's ultimate every single time she uses it. So, in order to actually survive Scorpetra, you have to bring a dedicated sleep or stun character and you have to play very meticulously and make sure that Scorpetra never gets off an ultimate or at least never gets to the second ultimate, because the second ultimate is fatal, pretty much no matter who it hits, right? You have to be able to kill Scorpetra before her second ultimate. This is where the problem lies. To get past Scorpetra, you have to bring a sleep or a stun character, which does no real damage, and then you have to kill Bloodblade Karin, which is a character that is a DPS check at the end of the day. So if you don't bring sleeps or stuns, you can't make it to Karin. If you bring sleeps or stuns, then you don't have a high damage team in a DPS check scenario. See the problem? All right. Let's talk about who we're playing here for this fight. First up, we're going to be playing Brig as our tank. Now, Brig is available from completing the Hero's Path version of Adventurer's Path. If you get far enough in the Adventurer's Path, you will get him for free. So everyone should have access to him. The reason we are not playing Raz, who is usually the best tank in all of Abyss, is because you can't use his Soul Burn to reduce the cooldown of his skill too. He loses a lot of his offensive capability, and if you miss that defense break chance on his S2, that's game over, right? You get one shot. If it fails, you're done. Now, Breeg does have an extra turn in his kit, which will be disabled on the second floor, but... Limitless Sword Arts, aka Unlimited Blade Works, is a full strip that slows and defense breaks the target, making it excellent for killing at least one of the Watchers, which we have to kill at least the Light Watcher in order to clear. That's amazing. His basic attack skill, Shadow Swordsmanship, can also trigger Unlimited Blade Works on Bloodblade Karin. So you could get two, essentially, attacks at one time. You could attack a Watcher with Brig and also... Slow and defense break Bloodblade Karin, which is massive at buying us time and also increasing the overall damage. And he doesn't really need a lot of stats, right? Unlimited Blade Works gets 50% effectiveness up front. So you only need like 20% or 25% effectiveness on the character 
some amount of critical hit chance on the character so that that way he has a chance to do some amount of chip damage and then just build him full tank, right? I'm on speed boots, health percentage ring, and health percentage necklace. Brig will make your life so much easier if you use him. He was a character that came out at the tail end of 2023. For most people who have been suffering through this abyss floor, which has been since like late 2019, early 2020, this was not an option for you. Most guides are three to four years old. They have not used Brig yet. Brig is, I think, the key for a new player account to bypass this incredibly difficult floor. Please use him. As for our healer, you can use Inos 2.0. In fact, I think Inos 2.0 is the optimal way to play this floor because she doesn't have a non-attack skill and has a defense break. The problem is, unless you have a very highly invested in Celestine at like 24 or like plus 27, you're not going to have the healing in order to sustain through that fight. At plus 15, it is fairly difficult. So as a result, I'm going to use Tamarin. She makes the score Petra phase easier, but she's nearly useless in the Bloodblade Karin fight until the very end. Because remember, you can't take extra turns, so when you idle mode, you lose your turn. You don't get to use an ability. Skill 2 does nothing as long as that Light Watcher is alive because you get no combat raise push. So until you get that Light Watcher dead, Tamarin is effectively useless in the fight. That said, she still has inherent value because if you have a low damage clear, like what I'm going to be doing, there will be times where if you can get her into idle mode and you have a defense break from Brig, it is possible for you to get one or two extra dual attacks and that can be the deciding factor. It is imperative that you build Tamarin with at least 60% or more effectiveness because when you go idle mode, you will put Reflect on Bloodblade Corinne. If she uses her basic skill and it fails to strip Reflect, whoever you pull is most likely instantly dead, causing the run to fail. You must have the effectiveness for this floor. Wanderer's Potion follows the artifact, speed on the boots, health percentage in the ring, health percentage on the necklace. The character of choice here is going to be Commander Lorena for our DPS. Feel free to use any strong single target DPS. Lorena is the strongest one on my account. If you've been following along using this guide series, she's probably also the strongest single target DPS on your account. Daydream Joker doesn't really work here. So we're going to use whatever we have as the strongest damaging artifact. Special Strawberry Cake, which every player got for free for the 6th anniversary. gives 20% extra damage to boss monsters. So Bloodblade Corinne will work for this, right? Whatever you have that gives damage, a symbol of unity, whatever gives the most amount of damage is what you need here. Attack percentage boots, attack percentage ring, and critical hit damage as the necklace. Please, please get all of your abilities maxed out. If you could have the Spiral Breakthrough, obviously I don't have invested in here, but if you can get this invested, please, 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 please get these invested. Every single point of damage matters here on this fight. In fact, if I actually have the ability to skill this up on video right now, I'm going to do so because it will make my life that much easier. Sadly, I do not. All right, we're just going to keep on going on with Lorena as is, right? And then finally here, Pro Dollmaker Pro Horizon is going to be our dedicated sleep and stun character because she has both in the kit. Hypnosis being the sleep, and this Nightmare being the stun. Abyssal Crown, if you have it, it's not necessary. It does make your life a lot easier. Dollmaker Pearl Horizon falls off massively after the first floor, so don't worry too much about the stats. Just have over 60% effectiveness. Please get her as fast as possible. That is why I am on this necklace that is critical hit damage. I'm only playing it for the 17 speed. Whatever you can get as fast as possible on Dollmaker. You need her to be able to cycle turns in order to survive Score Petra. If you've been following along with my guides and you already have Tenebria, Tenebria is significantly better than playing Dollmaker or Pearl Horizon because she actually deals damage. Build her with 60% effectiveness, a bunch of critical hit chance, and some critical hit damage. Again, try to get her as fast as possible. If you build her as like a hybrid debuffer DPS with high speed, this floor will become trivial. She is incredible for all phases of this fight, and I think overall the best character for this floor. I did not want to use her for this clear, though, because she is a five-star that not everyone has access to. I wanted to use as many free-to-play units as possible. All these characters are connection heroes, uh, free adventurous path heroes, uh, or they are a character that is a three-star that you could get easily from the game's gotcha. Now that you understand the mechanics, 
and the team. Let's jump into it. All right, so here at the start, you want to use your AoE sleep skill or your AoE stun, whatever you have. So it's Hypnosis here for me on Dollmaker. It might be Nightmare for you on Red Tenebria. Whatever you have, this is where you use it. Barrier up with Brig. Look at the combat readiness bar. If Scorpetra is massively behind Lorena, then you don't want to hit the Scorpetra here with the Brig. Then what you want to do is use S3 on one of the scorpions that is not slowed. I have no mercy to spare. If for some reason Scorpetra is behind Brig but ahead of Lorena, then you want to S3 there into the Scorpetra. The reason for this is you get bonus damage when it's slept or stunned, but every time you hit it when it's slept or stunned, it gets a huge CR boost, as you'll see here in a second. Watch it on the CR bar on the left. Alright. So let's go fish for Abyssal. Ooh, we got it, surprisingly. We want to save that hit for Lorena if we can get it. Might not be possible. So we'll go S1 here. Nah, I wasn't able to. Fish for another S3 here. So we want to keep it stunned when the bar is low, just so we have shots, like chances to deal damage with Arena. Same thing here. It's going to take the turn next anyway and get out of stun, so we might as well go for the double tap here. It's skill 2 here to heal up 3. Alright, now we want to... Fish for Abyssal Crown. If we got an Abyssal Crown there, that's just free damage. It might happen a couple times throughout the video. Alright, chip damage here. Chip damage. Okay, so that claw is the defense break. Normally, you might get like a stun there. Stun's a bit more problematic than defense break. So we're gonna go for a sleep here. You'll be prettier when you wake up. Your efforts are futile. Alright, now we look. Now it's gonna wake up if we hit it, right? Now if we S1, it's guaranteed to wake it up because the fallout will automatically go into Scorpetra. So instead what we'll do is we'll S3 here. There's nothing more absurd. Than the arrogance of a fool. Fish for Abyssal on this. I will continue my training. Hit Scorpetra for damage. Here's the stun. I'm scared. Get idle mode to get out of it right on time. To my I will shine. Shine free. Are you Two quick fighting? ones here from Bree. With each You degrade yourself further. All right, we're going to use this here, the stun. I know it's close to the uh, ultimate here, right? This one, destruction. But with idle mode up, we'll probably cycle back into it, so it's fine. This is our biggest damage window with idle mode up. Barrier up. Or Petra. Fish for Abyssal. The Order of the Shield does not back down. Ta -da! Ladies and gentlemen, let's Two quick ones here with Bree. I have no mercy to spare. For your reckless greed. Now, if we don't get this sleep. Our guy Breek here is gonna go to like 10% health. So let's hope we get it. How about you take a little nap? My spear will Not only everyone. did we get the sleep, we got the lucky Abyssal Crown stun, which means we can actually hit the Scorpetra for free damage here. If you had only gotten a sleep here, you just have to attack one of the scorpions, let Scorpetra pass the turn. Shall I make 
All right, I have to stun Scorpetra again. Don't want to hit that. Your efforts are futile. Hit here. I will continue my training. Chip damage. Fish for abyssal. I was just thinking I didn't have enough dog. You can't close your eyes. Fish here. I have zero tolerance. Out of respect, I'll use all my might. Your suffering is self inflicted. There's nothing more absurd than the arrogance of a fool. Alright, big turn here. We have to try to fish for the Abyssal. If not, then our guy Brieg is going to take a lot of damage. Didn't get it. Alright, we can go skill one here. Now watch how much damage Brieg takes here. Alright, we have to idle here to help him recover. It doesn't matter if we burn our idol when she's this low on HP, right? Because we can't use idol mode on the next floor. Are you finished fighting? At least not for a while. Let's slow one of these just to help Brieg recover. You degrade yourself further. You play with and shit? We can do that to try to slow more people. Basic here. It's done here. Lorena. Now, Lorena, I could end it here, but then Brig is really, really dangerously low on life. So I don't think I want to do that. Instead, I'll just basic. Your efforts are futile. So let's go here. Fish for abyssal. And then S2 here. We go the barrier here. Your suffering is self inflicted. And we'll let Brig finish this off and he'll go into the next floor with the barrier. For your reckless greed. Will you play with me? Alright. So since I have no cooldowns here, I'm just gonna Arky with Pearl Horizon. When you don't have like great turns, Arky is a pretty good thing as long as both of these adds are alive. Arky does not do bonus damage to BBK. Please keep that in mind. But we have to rush down the adds. If you don't have great damage, only focus the light one. If you have great damage, try to kill both. For me, because I'm on a new account, I'm only going to focus the light one. All right? So again, if you have CC, use it here. My cooldowns are kind of desync, so I'm just going to Arky. All right, we're going to basic attack here. Are you finished fighting? Basic here. So I'll become Ash. I will continue my training. Gonna skill three here. Shall I make you slow everything? You can't close your eyes. All right, we're gonna skill two here. That will put reflect on BBK, but we don't care. We're not attacking her yet. Your suffering is self-inflicted. All right. So let's go. He's going to wake up next turn. So we're just going to attack here. Just to build our fighting spirit. Try to stun this again. Back here. This will give us access to idle mode later. I have zero tolerance for my enemies. Defense break this. Then the arrogance of a fool. That's good for us. Will you play with Arky, because I have nothing better to do here. The spirit of a commander. I'm scared. All right, now that that's dead, we are unchained to use our uh, extra turns here. Out of respect, Barrier. This puts up Reflect. But 
as you can see, I have full fighting spirit. So the barrier will eat the reflect damage on the S1. And then the unlimited blade works will strip the reflect and hopefully slow and defense break blood blade Corinne, which we're going to hopefully ride to a victory. All right. Arky does not matter for the purposes of this. So instead of what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish for an abyssal on the ad, right? Because if I get it, that's awesome. It slows BBK down. All right. Attack here. Are you finished fighting yet? Back here. You can't close your Idle eyes. mode here. Listen. You'll notice she gets reflect again. Another gamble here. We're going to soul burn to heal up Brieg. But also, this basic attack skill here is going to try to strip this reflect. That's why we build effect this. If it fails, we probably lose. Together. Let's fight together. Shall I make you Slow. Soul burn here because again, Arky doesn't matter. So we just want to soul burn into the arena for big damage. The spirit of a commander. <laughs> I was just thinking I didn't have enough hmm. doll. Tough choice, tough choice. Okay, S3 for the souls. And if we do it on this, it'll do the most amount of damage. So I'm just gonna do this for the souls. Back here. You can't Hopefully we survive. Okay, everyone's good. Need defense break as soon as possible. We'll get that on Briggs next turn. Fish for a duel. Barrier. Has reflect again. Same scenario. Strip. Dual attack. Dual attack. Fish for duel. Skill three. Basic attack. Spiral breakthrough. Hopefully this kills. And she is down. There you go. Abyss 105 in a nutshell using entirely connection units, adventurous path units, and one specialty change three star that everyone should have access to. So hopefully you found this super helpful. If you have any questions, please ask them down in the comments below. And more so than any other floor, please post your successful clears down below for other players to see. It's very important. This is the probably biggest sticking point in the entire community besides Abyss 102. Me personally, I think 102 might be a little bit harder than this one. We still have 107, 109, and 115 for the like extremely difficult floors, right? That are still left. So when we get there, again, make sure you're ready for yet another like difficult challenge. Hopefully this one wasn't too bad for you, right? I'll continue to try to come up with as many free to play, low level, free gear clears as I possibly can. All right. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 106. Later now.